Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode of How To and Review. In this episode, we're going to be looking at the Ryobi 40 volt HP high performance 8 inch cordless auger. Uh, picked this up to put it in a fence, so we thought we'd take a look at it. So before we start, let's go ahead and click that like button and subscribe for future content if you haven't already. Now, if you've been following our garage project at all, we've been rebuilding our garage and one of the next steps along the way is going to be putting in a split rail fence. We currently have the remnants of a chain link fence, um, which yeah, we decided to go with something a little bit more country and traditional and a split link. And, uh, you know, we could spend our time digging out all the different holes or just go ahead and use an auger, which is what we're doing. Now, I ordered this uh, not that long ago off of directtools.com. Um, you know, I think a lot of people think you only can get Ryobi tools out of Home Depot, but there's a couple other retailers as well, too, including Direct Tools, which offers them as well. So let's go ahead and tear this open and see what we have inside. Um, opening this up, oh, you can see over here, we have our charging unit, and here is one 40 volt battery. This does come with the 40 volt battery which you find in a lot of different products, including their lawnmower and a lot of outdoor equipment. Oh, and I see Maverick woke up with a piece of hair on his head. Let's go ahead and put these over to the side here and let's dive in. All right, so we can see here is our eight inch auger here. Um, pretty substantial, uh, pretty solid it seems overall. And our auger is over here. Let's go ahead and open this up and see what kind of documentation we got. Uh, redeem your free rapid charger. Oh, apparently you can get a uh, new charger in there, which is pretty awesome. Uh, here's our instruction manual. And I'm not going to look through this later, but I found that a lot of times, as I mentioned before, these Ryobi instructions are pretty much garbage. I mean, there's really not much that it tells you about it. This, I guess, tells you more about the um, batteries themselves. Here are the handles for the auger, as well as the operational switch we can just see right here. And let's see what else we got lying around. Anything down in here? Nope, that's just padding. Uh, here's our little assembly bolts. Uh, so go ahead and put this together. You can see it actually comes with a tiny little wrench, which is nice if you don't have one, I guess. Though imagine if you're Using this, you probably already got your own assortment of tools, to be honest. And here's the auger unit itself. All right, so let's go ahead and put this together. All right, so let's go ahead and start putting this together. Oh, and sorry if there's a little background noise today. We have uh, a lot of my neighbors are working on the yard today, which is awesome, getting outside, doing some work. Um, so it looks like we're gonna screw these in and I'm not sure whether we should go in or out like this. I'm going to say we're going to go flat in on this side. Eh, I could probably look on, in, on instructions on how to put this together, if they're even in there. But, you know, I do got to follow the guide code. That we try to avoid instructions at all costs, unless it's actually something where we get completely stumped. And then me personally, I usually go to a YouTube video before I even crack open the manual. So we can just thread these in here to get these held in temporarily. Um, oh, and uh, just lining up the HP over to here, we can see that this is probably gonna line up over here, um, which, uh, actually, you know what? I am wondering if I'm doing this the right way. I'm not sure that I am because, ah, I am. This is kind of misleading. If you look at this, this, shouldn't this be facing the same side as looking at that? It's kind of weird, I guess. Maybe they want people looking at it to see. So I guess it does go the other way around. The reason I noticed that right away is our little connection plug for this is right in here. So actually, let's go ahead and connect that first because I think that's going to be hard to get in once we actually get this into the unit. So let's see, this is going to screw in, I assume. Ah, it only goes in a specific way. There we go. 
and we just screw this in to lock it in we're good to go all right and we got our unit here let's go ahead and assemble it you know i often joke now just keep in mind i am no professional i am not a full-time reviewer of these products i am just like you buying these things down at home depot or direct tools or lowe's or some other place to get work done um which i think kind of helps i mean I, a lot of times i see these videos from how to's or you know reviews of tools um and i enjoy them don't get me wrong like there's one that i watch um where they take impact wrenches and they do a lot of uh different reviews of those products and that's great they do this under the extreme circumstances but for the regular average joe schmo working on their house at home you know it's kind of neat to see those but is it really going to be applicable right like for if you're buying something from ryobi well to begin with you're probably not a professional right because a lot of times if you're a professional you're buying something like snap-on or makita or at a minimum probably dewalt i know my dad worked in a sign building company for years and their shop, the only thing they used was DeWalt and they swore by it. And DeWalt, I feel, is actually, from my understanding, is on the low end of the spectrum as far as professional tools. Um, Ryobi is probably one of the better consumer and they're trying to get into that uh, professional line, but I, I don't, can't imagine they're actually there yet, right? I mean, not saying that you couldn't do a professional job with these tools, but I, I don't think that really has ever been their focus. Um, and the reason I say that is it, it kind of speaks through their products, right? Now this is the 40 volt and this 40 volt will work with all their other 40 volt products. But if you've watched our other reviews on Robbie products, right? With the wire, with the uh, wireless, what they harp on is that one plus system. And then that goes all the way back to when they had the old blue NICAD batteries and they've kept that compatibility. They could have changed the form factor and made it different. But I think they did it because they know the average Joe consumer, he may use a tool like what, once a year sometimes? Some, I mean, you may use it more. I use mine a lot more. But um, it's not like a day in and day out, like a mechanic in an auto shop or working in a machine shop or something of that nature. So I think that's a good notion to keep in mind. So assembly seems pretty straightforward, right? We're going through, we're putting these screws on them. You can see it already has uh, the, what that blue one there, um, that is Loctite. So that once these screws get in, it's gonna be kind of hard to get these undone, um, at least over time, which is good. Cause you know, obviously with an auger, um, this is gonna be putting a lot of stress and force on this. And over time, it could loosen up these bolts. And you know, if you're, if you think about where you're gonna use this, you're gonna use this out um, in your field or out in your yard or your lawn. You lose a tiny little bolt like this, you're never going to find that thing. I mean, you could use a metal detector. Um, actually, I got a metal detector recently off of Harbor Freight, which I have to do a review on. But even then, it's probably trying to find a needle on a haystack, right? All right, so putting our last bolts on here, we still have to tighten them up, of course. Whoa, and we lost our little guy there. Let's turn this around. Almost got it. Here is my neighbor again working on his yard. I think he's doing some weed whacking right now. So anyway, I'm gonna finish putting this together. I'll put this in the high speed mode and we'll be back in just a moment. All right, we have this mostly assembled here. I felt that it took a little bit longer than it needed to. You can see I'm looking in here, we have a reverse, we have a high and low, um, which, ah, so that's high, low, reverse. It's interesting that they label the button for reverse, but not for high and low. Um, over here is gonna tell if it's running, fault overload, kickback, I guess that depending what color that's gonna be. We can see that our battery is gonna slide into here um, our connection is over there. And then lastly, connecting the auger. Let's put this over. Whoa, almost lost that. Um, this is going to connect in with a linchpin right into there. 
All right, so how far? See, that's kind of an that's kind of that's kind of a weird combination, isn't it? That you're not going to go flush against there. That you're going to go. There should be some type of. See, I would expect some kind of tab or something. Let you know where that's supposed to ride against, unless it's a design of augers everywhere. I don't know. And see, I gotta say, overall assembly of this thing. It's not as straightforward as most of the other Ryobi products. All right, there we go, we got the bid on. It took more effort than I probably should have. Now in charging this up, I can see why they're offering a free rapid charger is, it took forever and a day for this thing to charge up. I think overall it took close to two hours to get this thing fully charged. Um, I just assume it is, right? Yep, there we go. This does have the power meter, let us know what's going on here. All right, so let's put this in the old John Deere, take it out back and uh, see how. All right, so this is our first hole we're gonna put in with our auger. And we're gonna see if this can save us some time putting these in. And it really has a kickback. Which is good though. Now that we have our hole in here, um, probably should measure how deep this went, but I think that's, that's good overall. Now what we can do is we can go in reverse, and I think this actually might pull the dirt out. Nope, nope. <laughs> it just pulls the auger out. Either way, this does a huge job. Now, granted it didn't spread the dirt out, but the hard part of this, really been done ah. So probably what I should have done before I did anything was measure this out, see how deep this actually goes. At least look in the spec. If we know from the bottom blade, it looks like this goes down about ooh, two feet, 28 inches total. And we need to, go, I believe, go down about, we have a seven foot pole, so we're gonna have to go down about three feet. So that in mind, we're gonna have to go down to at least Ooh, a bit deeper than what we got there, but that's okay. Go to low first. something
and you can see we haven't had a lot of rain here lately in Pennsylvania which is kind of rare for the summer I mean we this is our drier time of the year but we're already this far down we don't even hit usually we're hitting water or something at this point but there is just nothing here it's just dry as a bone all right, so Maverick and I have been spending the last couple of days putting up our fence, or at least getting working on it. Um, as you can see, we're starting on our back line of our property. We put in a number of different fence posts for our split rail. We are putting over there the front end to get the front and the back, and we'll connect it right back up to replace this chain link fence. And uh, overall, it works pretty well. We didn't really have too many issues. I ran into one issue here um trying to put some type of hole uh but obviously you got this huge tree here so i'm probably hitting a roof and or a root i'm gonna have to figure out how to get around that but that's not so much an issue um with the unit as it is just uh, what i'm trying to get through overall um i'd say i was able to get uh let's see here i'd say about five posts dug um that were relatively I'd say medium difficulty as far as what I had to dig through. Um, this was a long time ago wooded property, so I am going through at least old tree roots and whatnot. It's just bare dirt. It's not just bare dirt. And uh, it did pretty good. So on a single battery charge, it came with the unit. I'm getting, as I mentioned, I'm gonna say anywhere from about four to five post hole dugs. So if you're gonna do a lot of different um like a longer fence or use this basically in one shot one day you're probably going to want to get maybe two to three batteries with the rapid charger um to kind of keep you going as you go throughout but um overall it worked pretty well gotta say so quick sum up what i like and dislike about this overall it's a pretty sizable unit but you kind of expect that um when you're going to pick up one of these and it is nice having the high and the low. I find that most of the time I'm going to use the low. Uh, reverse is handy if it gets stuck. And then high is good if I'm going to try to pull some of the dirt out before I have to scoop it out by hand. Uh, well, by hand by um, using my hole digger. Um, you are going to need some type of shovel or hole digger to get the dirt out. Uh, this is not going to take all the dirt out for you. Um, but uh, overall, it does pretty good. You can see on the bottom here. Let me open this up at the end of the bit uh, you have two things this is a cutter down here and and on the other side uh, if you can see that close. you can see it has more of a uh, a different edge on the other side so between the two it kind of gets through just about everything um, disconnects on and off there it works pretty well overall one thing I found is when I'm digging this or using this to dig, um, when you go through, it's gonna reach a point probably somewhere about halfway where it actually tries to go a little bit too quick for itself. Um, so you have to have pull it back, just kind of let it chew through slowly, which is fine if you're going through probably relatively normal dirt, but if you're gonna hit stones or branches down, it may kind of go too fast and get itself stuck. Um, overall though, I think the unit works pretty good. Uh, it um, has fit my needs and uh, it kind of saves having to rent one for a day and trying to get it all done in one day. I can kind of take my time with this, which was fantastic. So overall, I would say I give it a thumbs up. It's a pretty good product. Um, and I also enjoy too that it is a uh, 40 volt battery with Ryobi. They have a lot of different products. So that opens up uh, another avenue for different tools I can get with this as well too. So I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, please click like and subscribe for future content. It really does help out the channel. Um, we try to upload as often as we can while trying to work full-time jobs and doing everything else around here. Um, and uh, we hope to see you in future videos. And until we do, get out there, make your own great outdoor adventures. And as always, take care.